Hey guys, so if you remember the blower project we just got through working on in a previous video, I'm making this video in September, just kind of pre-starting on this. So this is going to take it a step further and basically convert it into electric furnace. And these are all junk found parts that are actually still good as far as I know. I don't know about all the relays, sequencers, and transformers, and contactors, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the elements do check out, so that's a plus. If anybody knows the price of these parts, they're extremely expensive if you have to buy them new. Like this assembly right here is almost $200, and these are all about the same too. So, you know, highly recommend it to try to find a used one or a junk one and get the parts out of it. Don't buy nothing new to do something like this. And So, basically what we're going to do, this is the element we're going to use. This is a, labeled as a 14.4 kilowatt which comes out with all three elements on it be 62 amps I believe is what it draws so you might as well say 15,000 watts and you're probably wondering why I'm doing this because I already have a ceiling mounted uh, 5,000 watt heater as you see me install on in a previous video I do want to add a wood burning stove in here because we do have a fireplace in the house it's got an insert and it does really good so I just thought you know burning wood would be a free to cheap but way to heat this garage but i want a fast warm up so if it's extremely cold it'd be nice to be able to turn something like this on while i'm getting the fire going or if i'm just going to be out here you know working for 20 or 30 minutes making a short five minute video i'm not you know building a fire and waiting two hours for it to warm up or an hour or whatever i can just turn this on and have some heat before i start making the video or something you know uh, just trying to have options and stuff. Not a fan of electric heat, but it's just a, a convenient kind of setup in a way. And this is going to be made to run off 220, obviously. And we're just and we're going to plug into this welder plug. That's what's in the box is a new uh, plug to wire into it. We're going to focus more on the electrical part of this. I'm going to do the fabrication off camera. We'll just kind of look at what we're doing. Then we'll. We'll do some testing with it before we actually do the control wiring. Then we can make sure that this uh, blower is not too powerful for a heating element. Obviously, this this came out of a gas furnace, which you know it's not that much different as far as the airflow and stuff goes. But this does have a pretty high output on it. All right, so I got a very temporary setup here just for testing it. Obviously, it's not going to be nothing like it's all going to be enclosed. I got a piece of the uh, wire to run to it. I just have it temporarily hooked up with a parallel 10 gauge wire, just as a temp very, extremely temporary setup, not recommended. You see, I'm just running two together and then jumping over to this breaker. So, what we got here, the 60 amp breaker controls two of the elements, and this one controls the third one. Uh, we're going to wire up the relays and stuff. Right now, everything's bypassed and just hooked up straight. Now obviously you're not going to be able to tell too much from the video because you're not going to be able to feel the air coming off of it, but this is just kind of a, an experimental, so it's on, so I can't turn these on yet until the motor's on. I'll take a chance to burn it up because I don't have none of the uh, safety features hooked up. It does have thermal resistors on here. Decent amount of heat coming off there, guys. Just bump up to the next speed and see what uh, starts cooling down. Wow, that's impressive. That's a, that's a lot of heat coming out of there. Alright, so this is the first piece of the fabrication. Just thought I'd kind of share with you how I'm cutting everything out. So this is going to go in the front, front here, and these tabs are going to be what locks it into the lipids around there so i just kind of wanted to share it with you and we'll skip the rest of the fabrication on the video and just look at it when we're done i know i said i wouldn't bore you with the fabrication video or the fabrication part of it but i just kind of wanted to show you like kind of in the middle kind of here so i made this piece here bent the edges cut out the plasma cutter drilled a hole for the rod to come through uh welded that on 
on that edge right there. Uh, got a temporary screw holding this piece in. There's going to be another piece similar to this on the top and the bottom. Then the actual heating element assembly will screw onto it. Alright, so now all that's left is to mount the receptacle in the back for the blower to plug in. Mount the other relay. And i got to build the, uh, the bent part here that will cover up the wiring part and be cut out for the breakers. And we'll get this vent here to put on the front. That was my other idea, it was a thing for a roller in a bucket of paint. And it's going to get it's a little bit big, but it'll be fine. Then take everything apart and paint it. But if you're wondering what these holes are for up here, I cut it out and bent these tabs down to have an anchor point for these. Did the same thing down here too, and these holes will be filled in with probably a piece of aluminum tape. Alright, so I'm making the uh, cover part for the electrical part of it. And I repurposed this, uh, it's like a cover off of an old air conditioner unit outside or something I found it in a junk pile. And I thought that would be the perfect piece, that way I wouldn't have to deal with this bend because that was already formed. So now I just got to cut out for the breakers and at some point drill for the controls and stuff. Alright guys, it's not perfect, but you know, it's probably good enough for what I can do. Got this cut out for the breakers and there'll be a switch probably up here or probably down here. And we might put it beside here if there's enough clearance. There's going to be a receptacle on the back to plug the blower into. The big cable is going to be coming out right here. So that's how that's going to be set up. And all this is going to be painted black. Might put that toggle switch over here. That way all the controls are right here on the front. That make the most sense. We're going to take it all apart. Go ahead and get some paint on everything. It's a little cool. It's 66 inside October 1st today. And if you see the extra holes in this, it's because I had it on upside down. I got these louvers bent down just a little bit. I straightened them up. That way it wouldn't cause too much restriction and did it like that. There is a gap up here. I'm not too worried about it. This covered that hole and I will cover that one and the other one that's on the bottom. So hopefully it'll work. Oh it'll work but it's not going to look the best as it could because I'm not a sheet metal worker or fabricator. I mean I do do the stuff but you know it's not the, what I specialize in. But let's Look at it here in a little bit and get started on the wiring. You gotta clean the workbench up a little bit first though. Alright, so I just got everything apart and got the first coat on. Everything's pretty wet. I'm just doing a quick coat. I'm not doing a primer. This is actually a primer and a paint in one. Uh, I'm just trying to get the, trying to use the uh, fastest drying paint I got on hand. Cause it's a little cool right now, so I'm using Duplicolor acrylic enamel paint and primer. Alright, so I'm just leaving it with the bare minimum right now and let's take what we're going to call the common of the 240 side uh, this will be the side that's always hot as long as the breakers are on and the other side will be switched I just kind of wanted to show you what everything looked like I'm going to have to put another one of these contactors or relays whatever you want to call them over here beside one of these two uh, probably right here and mount the transformer and go from there just kind of wanted to show you what it looked like before I got started this is a little bit of during the wiring. I'm kind of do some testing here to make sure everything is working right, which it was not. So these little timer rectifiers, CRR 9-9 and the other one's dash 5, are supposed to stay on for just a little bit, then shut it off to sequence everything. So this is the newer type of sequencer setup. I want the blower to run at least for a few seconds after the elements kick off. So as soon as the thermostat kicks off, I want it, you know, to run for just a little bit. So I got a 4700 microfarad 50 volt capacitor wired in parallel to this relay. So watch what happens. Plugging it in. All three relays come on. If you hear the beeping, it represents the boiler being on. So listen when I unplug it. Unplug. So as soon as I unplugged it, the other two went off. They'll be controlling the elements. And this stayed on for approximately four seconds until the capacitor drained off. So that's how I'm going to set this up. I think it'll work perfect. That way the thermostat comes on, all three elements, and the blower comes on. Which is a pretty decent surge, but this is a little bit different setup. So I want the most hot air coming out as possible when it first comes on. So everything comes on, and the thermostat kicks off, gets warm enough in here so the two 
relays control and elements shut off. And this one stays on until the capacitor drains, keeping the uh, boiler on for about four seconds to cool the elements, to get as much heat out of it as I can, and to keep from uh, having anything too hot or heating up inside there. So it'll work, a little kind of a crude way of doing it, but this is a DC setup. The thermostat's still seeing AC voltage. This will be representing the thermostat here, coming off the transformer at 24 volts. I'm also wiring up the safety feature, which is the uh, temperature the thermostat shut off here in case uh, something gets too hot. That'll break the ground on all three coils, and we'll also bypass the capacitor. So if anything happens at all, it'll shut everything off immediately. Spaghetti, anyone? <laughs> so we got the, everything set up and getting ready to test it. This switch is a three-way switch. Center off like that. That way um, up will be probably on, like thermostat bypass, which means it'll come on no matter what the thermostat's set on. The center will be off. Then down will be the external uh, wall mount thermostat, which will hook across the center leg and this leg here. The cable coming in up here. I originally wanted it down here, but I had to have a place to mount the transformer. And plus, it was closer to all the where the parts where it'll be uh, connected to here. And it just comes out here. I got the blower plugged in here. That's the only bad thing about this. It's possible to fire it up. You know, with the switch off or the boiler unplugged and can overheat the element. And obviously it's just mounted like this to test that the paint's still drying on the shell. I just wanted to show you this before I put the cover back on it. These big wires are hard to work with on these plugs. And this type of connector is uh, hard to work with too. It probably took me a half hour just to do this part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on. And you want to make sure... There's no little pieces of wire or anything stuck in here because it can short up. All right, guys, so it's plugged in, not pl uh, on yet. I'm going to flip these breakers on too. Also wanted to note, I'll show it later, but there's a, another little fuse back here that runs the 120 side of this. So just another little note I wanted to share with you because the 120 circuit comes off the black wire, which is off the feeder wire. Let me make sure I tighten these up. And... If it if I didn't put a fuse in there, it'd been running straight off the 60 amp breaker on the garage, so it's not good. So here we go. So far, so good. Now let's throw the switch. Nothing. No smoke either, so that's a good thing. Okay, let me uh, check a couple things here off camera, then get right back to you. All right, I think I found the problem. I had the hot from the uh, transformer hot wire feeding the transformer on the primary side coming off the same side of the relay as the blower so it would have never got power to it so now turn the breaker off plug it in we should hear the transformer come on yep you may not be able to hear it all right let's see what happens kind of scared we got heat and the blower came on Everything's on. So now, when I flip this off, the elements should come off and the blower should stay on for just a few seconds. And that's just about perfect because it just starts cooling down. So coming off the hot side of the breaker, which is hot where the breakers are on or off, so this black wire comes over to this little fuse holder right here. Then black wire comes down to the one side of the contacts on this relay and that's where the problem is that I had the two yellow wires coming off of one side whereas this one goes to the primary side of the transformer and the other one goes to the blower so it would have never got power to it so I put a splitter on there and did it that way so from there when the relay comes on follow the yellow wire to the uh, hot side of the receptacle and that's where the blower gets its power. And then the white 
one of these white wires ties into the transformer and the other one goes up to ground right here and you see where that green wire comes down that's the plug on the receptacle so this is considered dirty power or not a true ground but that's just the way way things are on a 220 circuit like this in order to have an actual separate neutral you can see you'd have to have a white wire and it have to be a four prong plug over here and this is my welder hookup so just trying to keep things more universal the wires in the vise here just because I didn't want the weight of it on the the frame yet since it's not so secure and everything it's probably pretty weak right now so all this stuff is just pretty much going to sit in here and obviously we'll probably be modifying some things at some point I was originally going to make it to where on the thermostat if it's hooked up it would be a three wire you can flip the fan switch and just have the blower come on which we might do that sometime I'll just have to add some diodes in here to the control wiring but we'll we'll see you know it'd be fairly simple to do but uh but yeah let's get it all back together and then we'll look at it. i just wanted to show you how some of the wiring was on it so like i said these timers did not work they're just acting like rectifiers and the ones on the board right there is pretty much just the same thing and the capacitors jammed in between the relay and the transformer here it's just tied into the the purple wire and the orange wire. So I was putting this together and I thought I'd just share it with you. you know, it's funny how things work out. I've had this handle in my toolbox for years. I can't remember where I bought it from. I got it for like a dollar piece and I bought like two or three of them. But it lined up perfect on these holes that was already in this metal that came out of that shelf. I didn't even have to drill a hole. It was just ready to go. So this is going to be used to pull the heater part on and off there where it slides on. Not for picking up the whole thing, just for pulling up the heater part. Alright guys, so here it is all together. You see some scratches here from where I drilled it and wiped it away because I'm rushing it, trying to get everything done. <laughs> so here's the breaker cut out. I didn't get it to bass, but you know, it'll work. So here's what we got going here for now. Might add some things to it later. But right for now, right now it's in the middle position, so it's off. So down. We'll connect it to an external thermostat, which is not hooked up right now. Then up, we'll turn it on, which we'll see here in a second. Then to adjust the BTU or wattage of it, this breaker controls two elements, and this one controls one. So if I turn it off, I can put it in either 10,000 watt mode, 5,000, or the full 15,000. So in order to get just the blower on, you turn these two breakers off, and then turn this on. So when I turn this on, all three elements come on, and the blower comes on. That's an extreme amount of heat coming out of there. And you got to think, this is designed to pump heat all the way through a house and ductwork and everything. So when I turn it off, the elements kick off immediately. And the blower runs for about four seconds to cool the elements down. I started to do away with the breakers because it's got a, you know a breaker on the, in the box, but I just kind of liked it. It was kind of a factory kind of setup, so I just kind of left it alone. And I just zip tied the extra wire up around here to keep it out of the way. Okay, I didn't show the actual wiring on camera. I'm just going to. It was kind of hard to do. So I use these little inductor coils. These are made for Arduino. I think is how you say it. I never never really could say it right. But, uh, but they produce just enough current to light an LED. These panel mount LED indicators are for 12 volts DC. And these put out about 4 volts. They're a little bit dimmer than they would normally be. Now I didn't show, like I said, I didn't show it on the camera, but there's four of these in the heater attachment. One of them is the wire that feeds the 120 circuits. It has a blue LED, which is right here. And you can probably tell that it's barely on right now. That's indicating that the transformer is on. And there's another one of these feet running off of each wire. One of the wires going to the elements. So these are reading current, not voltage. Because you have voltage across the elements at all times. So if you took a voltmeter across any part of the element to ground, you're going to pick up 120 volts. 
since half of the circuit stays on all the time. So also put a plug up here to connect the external thermostat whenever we're ready for that. So when you flip this on, this comes on to indicate the blower is on, and this is each individual element. So turn it one off. So these were soldered straight to this for this and the blue light was a 120 volt indicator so I bypassed the inline resistor left the diode because they were have a diode on it and just did it like that and it works. Yeah, I thought I'd go ahead and put the thermostat wiring in here while I had a few minutes and then we'll go into extreme amount of detail but pretty much sums it up red's the common wire white is the heat signal wire and G is like for the fan or blower so if we ever hook the blower up where it come off of the uh, come on with the switch over here we'll hook it off the G and get it uh, set up like that so you can kind of see what's going on here I just took some flexible conduit and put the jack on the end here now I'm getting ready to make the cord that runs in between there and we'll have this end on both ends I just wanted to show you this before I mounted it this is the thermostat, nothing special, just a standard, pretty, just a pretty standard thermostat. And since the location is subject to change of the thermostat, I just put it on with double stick 3M tape, ran a conduit down here, so it's right here by the plug. That way all the connections are right here in one spot. And also, if you remember the ceiling mounted heater I got in here, I want to eventually put a transformer and the contactor in it that way it can plug into this if I wanted to run the thermostat off of it that's a 5,000 watt uh, heater it's got its own built-in thermostat but it's not as good as an actual wall mount and plugs in right here right beside the other plug might come up with something better later on if it bugs me too much we'll see and the cord runs over here it's the same length as the power cable it comes in on the top here. I'd rather have this plug on the back, but that's the only place I really had the free spot to do it. So now, turn the breaker on. Turn this to external thermostat. It should come on, we'll put it in heat mode. And it did. I believe it's working guys so now if I don't want to use the thermostat I can still put it in manual mode and run it like that so now it's automatic and it's, the cord's the same length as the uh, power cord so it can go anywhere within the range of the uh, cords <laughs> alright that's probably about it on this thing one more little modification this will probably be it <laughs> I put a little bit of a baffle in here to kind of block a little bit of airflow because this blower is too big and too powerful for this element. Like you probably need a 20 or 25,000 watt uh, heater to keep up with this blower. So we're just trying to limit some of the airflow into it and block it off. And I simulated it with something else here and blocked off about two thirds of the opening. And the air was probably twice as hot coming out. And the blower sped up a little bit, but it's putting out less air. So I think that'll work perfect. So we had it on the low setting, speed setting, and it still was too fast. Well guys, I guess that's about it. I thought this might make an interesting video, and hopefully it'll help you uh, build one if you got scrap parts. Another thing I was going to talk about, uh, do I recommend building one of these? Uh, only if you have access or have uh, old parts laying around, like the blower and the heating elements and the, the wiring and the sequencers and stuff. Don't go out and buy the blower and individual parts. You might as well just go buy electric furniture if you're going to do that. Because the whole point of this is to recycle parts and save it. So the only thing I've had to buy for this, this register or vent, that's an 8 by 10 vent. The switch, the lights, the pickup coils for the lights. I already had the wire 
run into this the big six uh, four wire I found a boiler in the trash from an old furnace had to buy a receptacle and cover um, screws and hardware obviously the two handles that's on it and I mean so in the paint for it so I got you know probably less than a hundred dollars in the whole project including paint and everything probably not even half that much really and I almost thought about mounting the thermostat on the unit the way it, the whole thing can be ran automatically because if you put it like right here where the air is coming in it'll read the air that's coming into it to a point but uh, I don't know so well guys thanks for watching the video is probably longer than I was planning on it so we'll catch you on the next one and like I said uh, before this clip, and that's why I might look a little different now in this clip before I did anything else to it. I'll add anything to it, any pictures or anything. So, well guys, questions, comments, uh, anything else, suggestions for similar videos, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, thanks for watching guys.